All right, guys, it's time for the highly anticipated update on this project. Now, as we teased in the last video, we are going to develop what we hope is a GM alternative to the Coyote, and that is the later production North Star Cadillac V8. Now, we took the engine all apart last video, and we found that the engine had a steel crank, a fairly stout looking set of connecting rods, and a valve train that I am very comfortable with. So we should have something that is ready to rock. And the last thing that we talked about in the previous episode was what vehicle are we gonna put it in? Here you go. We are going to stick this thing into the Ford and piss off all of the purists. I cannot wait until we take this car to shows and uh, have so many people say, is that a coyote? It should be a boatload of fun, and I hope this thing makes stupid power. But in order to tell you how we got to this point right here, let's go back in time and talk about the transmission. So as I just mentioned, the transmission is probably one of the most important parts of this swap. And that is because without the transmission, you can't get the power to the ground. And if you can't do that, who gives a crap? So I was excited to find out that one of the transmissions that I got with this engine was this one right here. And this is a 6L80E. If we look at the transmission tag here, the last digit here being an A, means that it is a 6L80E. So the nice thing about this transmission is it already has the bell housing bolt pattern that I need and they are proven to hold a uh, pretty decent power. Uh, I know a guy that is running a low eights in a 3,400 pound car with one of these, obviously with a few upgrades. So they are a very solid platform. The problem with this one in particular is it has probably some weird Cadillac ECU in the thing. So I would have to change that out to um, one of the ECUs from another vehicle that is easier to tune. And the other part is this is a four wheel drive transmission. It had this uh, little adapter plate thing on the end to sort of take it to the transfer case. And I wanted to convert this thing to a two wheel drive. I bought a 6L80E tail housing that is meant to convert to a two wheel drive that normally works on other 6L80Es. But what I found is the bolt pattern on that one was way too uh, wide and it sort of just uh, went around the, the outside of this bolt pattern and none of the bolts lined up. So if any of you out there know how to solve this for me, let me know down in the comments because I am at a loss. And since I wanted to get this project moving down the road, we decided to go a different direction and that is to adapt it to a Turbo 400. So next, let's show how we made an adapter plate. Now this may sound ridiculous, but nobody makes an adapter plate to go from a North Star LH2 to a small block Chevy. So we had to make our own. Now building an adapter plate for this engine starts right here on the computer in your design software. So the basic goals of a adapter plate are to take your bolt pattern from your engine, seen on these flange bolts here, and to take it to the bolt pattern of the transmission that you would like to use. So you can see the bolt holes here of a small block Chevy that I am trying to uh, adapt the engine to. Now every engine is going to have what are called dowel pins and basically what the dowel pins do is they get the transmission aligned so that the input shaft and the crankshaft center line match each other and are collinear. From there, your bolts that hold the bell housing down onto the engine are there to do just that. They are only there to provide clamping force. The dowel pins are what locates everything and the uh, bolts are there to provide clamping force. In the case of the North Star, it has two uh, dowel pins. They're more like dowel sleeves they uh, go around um, two of the bolt holes on the engine and they are here and here. Now to determine um, you know, what the pattern actually looks like, sometimes, like in the case of this engine, you get lucky and you find 
somebody has posted the drawing on the internet and I was able to find this. This is a 4T65E transmission bolt bell housing bolt pattern uh, that I was able to find. Now it has most of the bolt holes that I am after, but it is missing a few. So if we bring back our adapter plate, you can see that I was able to get uh, most of my bolt holes here on the perimeter, but there was a few over on this side of the engine uh, that were not included and that's because the transmission comes through uh, this region and the uh, transverse engines don't have uh, a bowling provision down here. So I was able to get most of what I needed from this drawing here, but I also took a picture of the transmission uh, from the front just as sort of a sanity check just to make sure everything looked okay and from there it was time to 3d print this model now how I did that was I actually um, split the thing into several pieces I did this for a couple of reasons and one of those reasons was my 3d printer uh, can only print a certain size but also I knew I was going to have particular trouble with this one region on the adapter plate. So I knew that I was going to have to reprint that part a couple of times. So that is uh, why I split it into a couple of pieces. So after I uh, printed it out, I found that a couple of my bolt holes, these two over here, were in the wrong location and I was able to uh, make the correction and do another print and I was able to get them to line up. From there, this is the part that uh, gets a little bit dicey. You have to uh, basically pray that you did everything right and you need to start cutting metal out. And now we are going to go into the real world and show you how it worked out. All right, guys, here is what we ended up. We made this out of 6061, three quarter inch plate, and uh, I think it came out pretty fantastic. As you can see, we got all of our bolt holes laid out. And then on the other side, we have our dowel locations here and here. And uh, hopefully they line up with our dowels here on the back of the engine, there and there. So let's get this thing on. Moment of truth. So get the one lined up and get the other one lined up. That looks fantastic. All right, I think we nailed it, guys. Now that we had an adapter plate, we could get the transmission bolted to the engine and dropped into the car. Since we already had a Turbo 400 set up in this Ford Fairmont right here, it was fairly easy to get the transmission cross member modified so that we were able to bolt the transmission to a solid mounting point. From here, it was time to uh, start working on the motor mounts. Now the motor mounts on this engine are a little bit strange. They're uh, a little bit further back on the engine than like an LS or a small block Chevy. Now this may sound ridiculous, but nobody makes a mount to put a North Star V8 into a Ford Fairmont Fox body platform. So we had to make our own. All right guys, so this is the engine in its final resting place. And I think it fits in there pretty decent. From what I hear, the Coyote engines are a very tight fit here along the sides of the engine. And it looks like we may actually have some room here to uh, sort of work on the engine. Crazy, I know, right? So if we go in down below, you'll see that we have our uh, motor mounts here. We basically welded plates onto the K member and adapted to the original motor mounts that the Cadillac was um, mounted with originally. Now the driver's side was a little bit more challenging just because we had the steering rack to get around. So we had to make one plate here that came off the side and we had to do some significant modifications here to the original motor mount, but it is mounted up. And like I said, we'll add some more uh, gusseting once the engine is pulled out of the car, but we can do that later 
we wanted to get on to some more of the uh, more glamorous stuff, just so we could show you guys a more entertaining product. Now, as I mentioned before, the uh, LH2 has a factory rear sump offering, and I bought one of those off of eBay as soon as I found out that they were available. And you can see it here bolted to the engine. This is originally spec'd for a Cadillac XLR, and it is a factory eight quart oil pan, which should do very well in this chassis. To make the oil pan fit, uh, in this particular chassis, we had to do a little bit of modification here to our K member. We had to sort of kick the uh, bottom of it forward a bit. But now the oil sump here fits the chassis very nicely. We will have to add some uh, turbo drains here on the oil pan, but more on that later. So let's move on to the manifolds. Now this may sound ridiculous, but nobody makes a turbo manifold to put an LH2 Northstar V8 into a Ford Fairmont. So we had to make our own. And this is not it. This is an up and forward or down and forward turbo manifold for a GM LS engine. And we basically use one of these as material to make our own turbo manifold. And here is what we ended up with. This is a fully fabricated turbo manifold that my dad and I just finished making up. And this may sound ridiculous, but nobody makes exhaust flanges for a LH2 Northstar V8. So I had to make those as well. I drew them up in CAD, had them sent off to get cut out of stainless steel plate. And we came up with this design here. Now the bore spacing on a North Star is significantly shorter than an LS. So all of the tubes here had to get sort of uh, scrunched together. Um, and we also had to weld in some sections in here to sort of get the uh, spacing on the manifold where it needed to be to fit the chassis. To bend the uh, tubing into the shape of the LH2 uh, exhaust ports, my dad made this little tool that we put into our hydraulic press. And basically how this works is it basically takes the tube and squishes it into uh, the sort of oval shape that you see on the LH2. This worked out pretty well, and uh, I would definitely recommend uh, if somebody's making a set of headers that they uh, build themselves something like this. I think it came out pretty decent, so let's get this onto the car along with its mate and show you what we got. <gasps> That's right, we're going twin alternator on this bad boy. All right guys, what do you think? We are going twin turbo on this engine, and I hope you guys are as excited as I am. For the turbos, we chose to go with uh, twin GT3582s right off of eBay. 
because we have had a lot of success with these turbos in the past. And we figured with such a small engine, we probably needed to uh, help it out a little bit in the spooling department with a set of twin turbos. Now, I expect these turbos to take us pretty far. I would think that a set of turbos like this could easily get us uh, well over 800 wheel horsepower, but we will find out in the future. Also with the headers, we need to sort out our wastegate locations. As you can see, we have these nice bends coming off the collectors on both sides that we can easily put a wastegate off of and get good priority flow. So we should have good stable boost control. The current plan is to run a uh, bumper dump exhaust. So we will route the exhaust down through this hole here and then right underneath of the uh, front bumper, both with the exhaust and the wastegate. So it should look and sound pretty cool. Now I have to say that we have had quite the response to this particular project. A lot of you guys are very excited to see how this uh, whole thing works out, and we are too. And a few of you um, have already thought that we gave up on the project or um, you know just weren't doing it anymore. And um, all I got to say is, guys, you got to be a little bit patient. This may sound ridiculous, but nobody makes parts for these. And the people that do are already on board with us. In fact, the day before I posted the video on this engine uh, two months ago, the owner of North Star Performance actually messaged me asking me about 4200 stuff. And I have already talked to him uh, in depth about um, you know, what our plans are and how he can help us out. So we will definitely be having some collaboration with him, but the parts that he doesn't offer, nobody else makes. So things like the adapter plate or the exhaust flanges or stuff like that, you know, they take time to uh, produce and we wanna make sure that we do this project right. We wanna show this platform in the best light possible and give it all of the advantages that any other platform has. So a few of the things are gonna take a little bit of time. That being said, most of the harder to get or specialized type stuff uh, has already been taken care of and things should move a little bit quicker. So hopefully we can get this project moving and uh, we'll have this thing running in no time. I wanna say a big thanks for everybody for uh, sticking around and let me know how excited you guys are in the comments. Do you like the twin turbos? I mean alternators, do you like them? And what about how much horsepower do you think this thing's gonna make? Frankly, I am super excited to get this project done. So make sure that you guys stay tuned. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe buy a t-shirt, and we'll see you in the next one.